Craving a burger, fries, and a soda? On one hand, you could go to McDonald's. Well, and you know how that goes. Or on the other hand, you could try the bioenergetic burger and bring your metabolism to the next level. In this video, I'm gonna break down the ingredients and nutrient profile of a McDonald's burger, and I'm gonna give you a better option, an option 10 times better than this McDonald's option, and that's gonna be the new and improved bioenergetic burger that was inspired by our resident bioenergetic Bulgarian, Georgie Dinkoff. A Georgie's Bulgarian bioenergetic burger. We made burgers where each burger had about a gram of calcium in it. Uh, meat is also high in the inflammatory amino acids, mm -hmm. so which means you need about 10 grams of gelatin per pound of ground beef. The burgers got better. They became <laughs> juicier. So with that said, let's jump in to the McDonald's burger ingredient list, and then we'll look in chronometer afterwards looking at the nutrition breakdown. So I pulled up a website that I like to use here called Nutritionix that gives me the full breakdown of different ingredients inside different food products and restaurants. And so it also gives us nutrition facts. We're not really gonna worry about this. We're just gonna look at the ingredients. So with the McDonald's burger, the beef patty is the safest thing. Everything else after that, pretty much downhill, you can consider it junk. I wouldn't even consider it food. So we have ingredients. We start out with 100% beef patty, 100% pure USDA inspected beef, no fillers, no extenders, prepared with grill seasoning. Okay, grill seasoning, salt, and black pepper. That's fine. So if you're going to McDonald's, you can get the patty, skip everything else, and you'll see why now. When we look at the bun, we have a bunch of garbage in the bun. Just to name a few, we have folic acid, reduced iron, high fructose corn syrup, soybean oil, canola oil, calcium sulfate, calcium carbonate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium chloride, a bunch of dough conditioners that I can't even pronounce all their names. It's artificial gums like Gower gum, and then sodium propanate, calcium propanate, a bunch of different preservatives. When we look at the cheese, it has milk and cream, great, but then it's sodium citrate, citric acid, sodium phosphate, sorbic acid, lactic acid, acetic, acetic acid, sodium pyrophosphate, natural flavor, and then color added. So this is, I don't know what, how hard it is to just get normal cheddar cheese, but I wouldn't eat this cheese. And then the next one we have is even in the ketchup, we have high fructose corn syrup. Then we have calcium chloride alum, which is probably an aluminum derivative, potassium sorbate, polysorbate 80, and then natural flavors because the tomatoes they're using may not taste good enough. So basically... A lot of garbage. The only thing in here that's even semi-redeemable is going to be this 100% beef patty, but it's not even grass-fed beef. And the protein content, the amount of the beef patty is pretty small. It's only 15 grams of protein for this burger. So pretty pitiful overall. Now let's take a look in chronometer so I can show you this bioenergetic burger and we can also compare that to the McDonald's burger here. So let's start out with the protein content because it's pretty obvious that this is not so great. So when we look at this bioenergetic burger meal, we get 65 grams of protein in this meal. So quite a bit of protein, depending on your protein target, that could hit half your protein for the day or a third, about a third of the protein for the day. When we look at the McDonald's burger, not, this is the burger, fries, and Sprite, this meal, a regular McDonald's meal, only 19 grams of protein. So pretty garbage amount of protein overall. You're really just getting a bunch of carbs and fat. So let's go to the bioenergetic burger and look at its protein amino acid breakdown. So protein, 65 grams. We're almost hitting the almost every single amino acid that we need here for the entire day in one meal. So we're hitting almost all of our amino acid targets. We're just a little short in tryptophan and cysteine, which in the bioenergetic sphere, that I, you could argue that you don't actually want to get too much of these amino acids because those are the problematic amino acids. So what we do have instead of a lot of is the branch chain amino acids, which help with muscle growth. These are things like leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And we also have quite a bit of glycine here. And the reason we're getting glycine is because we added to this burger some collagen peptides. And then we have high quality grass-fed ground meat that's going to have a decent amount of glycine present in and of itself. So the glycine target for day per day that I'm shooting for is 0.2 grams per kilogram per day. It's usually for most people that works out to be 10 and 20 grams, between 10 and 20 grams per day. With the bioenergetic burger and the collagen peptides in one meal, you'll easily hit that target if you also organize your other meals well. So great option to hit that. McDonald's burger, glycine content, 0.7 grams. So pitiful amount of glycine. 
We're not even topping off all of the amino acids here. So just really not an ideal setup from a protein perspective. Next, let's look to a, at the carb, the carb content and the carb to protein ratio. So bioenergetic burger meal. So this whole meal, 126 grams of carbs, McDonald's cheeseburger, 117 grams of carbs, McDonald's meal. Now the carbs in the McDonald's meal are coming from French fries and Sprite. The carbs from the bioenergetic burger, also from the bun, are coming from old fashioned sourdough bread from a company I like called Berlin Bakery. They have pretty good bread, uh, pretty good sourdough bread. The ingredients is literally just the flour, salt, baking soda. No, none of the other additives that we saw with the M McDonald's bun. And then the other carb source we have here are air fried French fries. So we have about the four ounces of French fries here with a teaspoon of coconut oil. And we also have the grape juice, pomegranate juice, and orange juice mix instead of the Sprite. So the benefits here, so the carb content's about the same, but with this carb content, we have high quality sourdough bread where the bacteria in the sourdough bread can help to break down some of the problematic proteins in the wheat, like gluten. Then we have potatoes here, French fries, because what's a burger without French fries? that are made with coconut oils. So we're not getting the peroxidized fatty acids, those damaged fatty acids, the seed oils that we see in the McDonald's fries. And then we also have the sugar source here from the juice, grape, pomegranate, orange juice that has a bunch of vitamins and minerals as well as having a bunch of polyphenolic compounds that modulate the microbiome, lower inflammation, lower endotoxin burden, and it can help prevent and reverse, cardio, possibly reverse cardiovascular disease. McDonald's meal, we have French fries cooked in garbage fats, seed oils. And then we have Sprite with basically no nutrition besides high fructose corn syrup. So let's actually compare the carb breakdown. So if we come over here to the bioenergetic burger, what we see carbs, 100, it's 138 grams, 126 net carbs. We have much more fiber, 10 grams of fiber at like a 30 gram target per day. So we're getting one third of that. If this is one meal, you're, you're well on your way to the 30 gram target. We have a nice balanced ratio between fructose to glucose, one to one. We have a decent amount of starch from the potato. There should be a little bit more from the bread. It's not listed here. And then we have the sugars, which is coming from the juices that we mentioned. So overall, pretty good carb breakdown. Nice amount of fiber, decent amount of starch and sugars. And then when we look at the McDonald's meal, what we see, not so much, half the amount of fiber, only five grams. Imbalanced glucose to fructose ratio where fructose is higher because the Sprite is high fructose corn syrup. We do have starch but this is coming from non-sourdough bread and it's coming from fries fried in garbage, garbage oil. And if we look at the McDonald's meal, we might as well at this point jump over to fat and look at the PUFA content. In the McDonald's meal, we have 7.2 grams of omega-6 fats, the inflammatory polyunsaturated fats that are also high temperature heated because a decent portion of this, 6.1 grams is coming from the fries that are fried over and over again in the same garbage heated soybean, corn, canola oils that are highly problematic for cardiovascular health. When we look at the bioenergetic burger meal, we have same amount of fat, roughly 26 grams, but we only get one gram of omega-6, only one gram. And that's coming from the, from the ground beef here. And arguably it'd be even lower if this, this is not listed as grass-fed ground beef, but if you're using grass-fed ground beef, it's going to be lower overall. And we have a, basically only 1.5 grams of total polyunsaturated fats here. So way better fatty acid profile. And we're not getting any negative heated polyunsaturated fats. It's mostly saturated fats from coconut oil, from cheese, and then from the beef. And then also a decent amount of monounsaturated fats. So we're getting a nice mixture too of long chain fats, palmitic and stearic acid from the beef and the cheese. And then we're also getting a nice dose of medium chain fats from the coconut oil with the, with the French fries. It's your lauric acid, capric acid, caprylic acid. So much better overall in terms of fatty acids and then also the protein content of these meals. The other thing to keep in mind, just as a side note, the protein to carb ratio here for both meals is actually pretty good. About Well, it's two to one for the bioenergetic burger, which is what I'm shooting for, that meal. The McDonald's burger, since the protein is so poor, you have a higher ratio, but now you're not getting enough protein. So this is, this is, not, a, this is not a good breakdown overall. Now, the next thing we can look at is overall nutrient density. Bioenergetic burger smashes nutrient targets in the vitamin and mineral category. McDonald's burger, I mean, we're seeing multiple green bars here, multiple things hitting many times over the daily recommended intake. McDonald's burger, 
not a single green bar, not topping off a single nutrient profile here. So nutrient wise, much poorer overall. Plus it doesn't have all the polyphenolic compounds from some of the other, some of the other food sources. Then we can look at something like calcium to phosphorus ratio, bioenergetic burger. Cause we, we, we added in this coral calcium into the, into the burger, into the ground beef. What we're looking at calcium, 671 milligrams, phosphorus, 692. So we're basically one-to-one -one calcium to phosphorus. And we're getting half, more than half of our calcium target in the day. And we're hitting our phosphorus target. McDonald's burger, only 250 grams of milligrams of calcium and 291 milligrams of phosphorus. So it's still one-to-one, -one, although the calcium here is from additives in, in, the, in the bun, in the, the, like the calcium lactate and chloride that they're adding as preservatives and additives in the bun. So it's not even the best forms of calcium. And then we also are getting the, the phosphorus intake. And again, these are half the levels that we're seeing inside the bioenergetic burger meal. Next thing we have is sodium to potassium ratio or potassium to sodium ratio. Bioenergetic burger, we're looking at 2.6 grams of potassium to 1.2 grams of sodium. So we're at a two to one ratio of potassium to sodium, which is what optimal to shoot for. I have a video about that. You could check that out. McDonald's burger, you have one gram of sodium to 800 milligrams or so of potassium. So the ratio is actually pretty poor. It's reversed where sodium's higher. This is not ideal for our cardiovascular health because of the, the RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. You can check out the video that I did on that on this channel. The next thing we have is, as I mentioned, McDonald's fries cooked in vegetable oil, 6.1 grams. Our fries, air fried with coconut oil. How much poof are we getting with that? None. 0.1 grams, no heated negative PUFAs inside this meal. Next component you have, and these are the last ones I'll wrap up with. These are some bonus components. The grape juice, pomegranate juice, and orange juice mix. So we have 16 ounces of juice to 16 ounces of Sprite. Sprite, zero nutrition, just high fructose corn syrup, water, and, and preservatives, additives. Grape juice, pomegranate juice, orange juice, smash our vitamin C target, hit a bunch of uh, vitamins and minerals, maybe not a massive amount, but in decent amounts with a potassium intake almost at a gram from those. And then for a couple of these different components, grape juice, high in polyphenols. We can look at this here. The polyphenols reduce the bioavailability of iron by 67%. So we want to keep our iron levels low because too much iron can actually lead to oxidative stress. So the ideal target I'm looking for on labs is greater than 50 on the ferritin to hundred. There's other values to look at there as well, but having grape juice with your high red meat intake can help to minimize excessive iron intake. Next component, pomegranate juice helps to pre prevent, possibly prevent and helps to possibly regress cardiovascular disease. We have a study here, pomegranate juice protection against cardiovascular disease. They say pomegranate juice and its byproducts substantially reduce macrophage cholesterol and oxidized lipid accumulation and foam cell formation, the hallmark of early atherogenesis, which is cardiovascular disease, leading to attenuation of atherosclerotic development and its consequent cardiovascular events. So we have a cardioprotective pomegranate juice here. And then the last one, our orange juice, I've talked about this study before, the orange juice can actually lower endotoxin post-meal. So what they say here is they say, in contrast, orange juice intake with a high fat, high carb meal prevented meal induced oxidative and inflammatory stress, including the increase in endotoxin and toll like receptor expression. These observations may help explain the mechanisms underlying postprandial oxidative stress inflammation, pathogenesis, insulin resistance, and atherosclerosis. So, again, we have some metabolically protective effects of the orange juice here, helping to lower endotoxin levels. So, the juice here, massive benefit overall. So with that said, just to recap, bioenergetic burger meal with French fries and 16 ounces of juice, high quality protein, optimal glycine intake, ideal carb to protein ratio of two to one, PUFA content smashed all the way down, kept super low, not tons of high heated PUFA, nutrient density, super high, calcium to phosphorus ratio, at least one to one, potassium to sodium ratio, at least two to one, minimizing lipid peroxides by using coconut oil with our French fries, and then we have a high polyphenol content from the grape juice that's preventing excess iron absorption, the pomegranate juice helping to protect our vasculature, and the orange juice helping to minimize endotoxin exposure. So this meal, this is 
a superfood meal. This is what a superfood meal would look like, not McDonald's and it's burger and fries. <laughs> Can't get better than that. Now, I do have a course dropping in the next month that shows you how to set up meals just like this beyond just burger and fries, many different options. So you can check that out at my website at mikefave.com and go ahead and try this bioenergetic burger meal. There's, you have all the amounts listed here and showed here on this page. And let me know what you think about it in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video.